Well, I heard one of our doc producers say that it, it represented about a year of her life bringing to the screen what, uh, what we've been seeing. And this documentary airs tomorrow night, Science and Faith. It's so, look at those footage, that footage is so beautiful. And I'm so proud of Michael Wright. I have to give a shout out to him. Cause you know, directors and producers were so behind the scenes many of the times and they just don't get the credit they deserve, but he is so talented and he's producing beautiful work. And I think that whole topic of science and faith, it's really, really um, important for us to understand as people of faith that we're not at war which I think is what he really explores. Is science and faith at war? Well, and these prestigious scientists, these aren't people in a corner. They've all accomplished something of world renown in the field of science. I learned so much reading his script about, I didn't even know about nanotechnology and <laughs> so many things. I was just absolutely in awe of how God has created this world. Well, we have a lot of color here uh, today in honor of the star of your documentary, Cheryl. Yes, a very, very talented man, Michael Bull Roberts. And My husband, is... by the way, commissioned this. He said, I want something that says Africa. And that's what Michael produced. And it's amazing because one of Michael's dreams is to go to Africa and to be on the mission field. And I really hope that that gets to happen for him, his health. It's a little, little iffy. And uh, he's still actually just finishing up house arrest which uh, may give you a clue to his background and his story. He's, and the uh, title of the doc. Yes, the title of the doc. I was commissioned to find somebody who was, who was notorious and is now glorious, and I think Michael Bull Roberts fits that so well. Actually, we, why don't we take a look at the trailer to start, oh, just so I people know to. what we're talking about. We have um, Michael's trailer, and uh, it, it'll give you just a little sense. If you haven't heard about this documentary yet, it's an amazing, amazing story. Let's take a look. I remember I was being abused a lot at home. I remember times when he picked me up by the neck, you know, punched me. But you could tell that something wasn't right with Mike. He was one of the big guys and he was a drug dealer. I felt untouchable, got his whole crew. And, you know, you had the money and you had the power. And why am I so lonely? They beat me down with baseball bats. And one comes back and puts a gun to my head. And to see him standing over me, it broke my heart. I look up and I said, fine, God, you win. The one thing I want is to feel love once, just pure love. The hot, exciting news is that, that Notorious to Glorious is being featured at a very special film festival. Cheryl, fill us in. Well, we're so excited that the Toronto Cornerstone International Film Festival, which is a film festival based on social justice issues, has actually uh, chosen Notorious as one of their official selections of the festival this weekend. So actually tonight it will be shown and it's a special screening at, uh, let me get this right, Bishop Morocco, Thomas Merton Secondary School, Bloor, C Bloor Street West and Dundas. So tonight at 7.30, uh, you can go and see Notorious to Glorious and uh, we'll be there as well to answer, do a question and answer session afterwards and a talk and mm. so it's just, it's a real honor. And you know, it's such an inspiring documentary and I just, we want to get it out there. We want more people to see it and to see the message of the documentary that God can change lives and that really nobody is too far gone. If you see Michael's story, nobody is oh, too far gone. Incredible. Uh, here's another one of his paintings of home. He's from the East Coast. And uh, I mean, what a gift has emerged out of the healing that Jesus has brought to this very troubled man's life. You know, I love, I love the fact he loves colors. He, he lo this painting is, you know, has a, a childlikeness, a color to it. And he said he never had color in his life. Everything was black. Wasn't yeah, it? and it's that sign of healing. And that's not the only thing we're doing at the festival. So Saturday night, uh, I'm there to, to uh, moderate a panel actually for this amazing film called 58. It's based on Isaiah 58. You've heard of this movement, I think. It's Live 58. And the whole idea of this movement is that you live the words of Isaiah 58. Which is a which, true fast. Yeah. You know, actually it says that God is not pleased with the fast that they are doing because they're doing this religious expression, but they're still oppressing people. They're still doing things that are displeasing to him. And he says, let me get the right part of it here. Um, you know, he says the kind of fast, he, he describes the fast he's chosen. He says, is it not to share your food with the hungry, provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood? And you know, the coolest thing is he goes on in that verse to talk about all these blessings that will come to you if you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry. 
It talks about healing and your light breaking forth like the dawn and all of these promises. And, you know, honestly, getting ready to moderate this panel on Saturday night here at the festival, um, I really studied this, this chapter, Isaiah 58, and I was amazed at the kind of things that God will do on your behalf if you work on behalf of the poor. Just looking at this with you before the program, I thought, oh, look what we're missing. Isn't that how you felt as yes. you read these beautiful scriptures? Yes. And this is the immutable, unchanging word of God. This is his commitment, his promise. I walked away from this thinking, you know what? If you're believing God for healing in your life, whether it be emotional, relational, physical, this says, if you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry, it says your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Mm -hmm. Your healing will quickly appear. I think that's really neat. I, I just, I felt personally challenged to actually, you know, as, as I'm serving the poor, to say to God, you know what, God, as I'm doing this and, and loving your, people with your love, can you come and do in my life what I need to be done? So what will you be doing as part of this panel? So this is great. We're going to do, we're going to watch the film, which is so powerful. Uh, the film called 58 and it, ta it visits poverty around the world, it tells their story and it just talks about people changing their lives and, and, and what would our life look like if we actually lived Isaiah 58? if we actually spent ourselves on behalf of the poor and fasted food so that we could give them our food, this whole idea. And uh, so we'll, we'll be talking about the film, we'll be talking about Isaiah 58, and I'm being joined by some really cool people. Darian Kovacs, he was on recently on Huntley Street. Great. He does a crowdfunding um, site called Love Global. Uh, Pastor Frank Fraser from the Messianic Church of God and our own Rochelle Maines. Back from California. Leaf Ministries, yes, wow. she's Reynolds and Kathy's daughter. Yeah. So I think it's going to be fascinating. And that is happening at Innes Hall at the University of Toronto, where most of the festival will be happening all weekend long. But this, what's the time for this one? This one is going to be at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, okay. 8 o'clock for 58. What so a it's an weekend. exciting weekend. And there's other, all kinds of other great films the whole weekend long. You can find out more about it at tciff.com, which stands for Toronto Cornerstone International Film Festival. Schedule and everything is there. You know, this, this is such an important event. This is about world shaping, making a difference. I'm going to suggest, our producers right there, I'm going to suggest we need a follow-up and need to hear on the other side what has come from Well, you know what? I'm passionate time. about supporting this event. It's a, it's a young girl, Jessica, who said, how can I help change the world? And she felt like bringing forth um, media about poverty and social justice and how people are changing the world is kind of her calling. And so this is my second year being part of it, and I just want to cheer her on and, and help her in any way I can because I think it's really important. Mm.